I figured that it was about time to make a quick video to clarify my thoughts on the elephants in the room of anime streaming on the internet, namely the existence of Anime Strike and Netflix. When they both appeared on the scene as big corporations, at least bigger than what we're used to, trying to be hip and cool, they were easy to ignore. With just one, maybe two shows total that were exclusive to their services, it was an unfortunate but easy thing to just write off. With this airing summer season, however, that is becoming more and more impossible to do. For those that don't know the problems inherent with these services, allow me to briefly explain. I have found that anime watchers in the streaming community tend to fall into one of two camps. Those that can afford subscription services through their jobs, allowances, etc and those who can't, either through lack of funds or just plain stinginess. One of the biggest problems of years past for anime streamers on a budget was what service to subscribe to, when you could only get either Crunchyroll or Funimation, tough choices had to be made. But Anime Strike makes those tough choices even harder for those on a budget. In the United States, not only does Anime Strike with its new exclusive licenses cost you $5 a month, but that's only after you've paid for the privilege of even accessing it by paying the additional $100 a year for Amazon Prime. Which means that in total for a year of Anime Strike, you are looking at a price tag of approximately 160 US dollars. Compare that with a year of Crunchyroll service at only around $60 US for their much larger library, and you don't have to wonder why some people are not taking to this new Amazon service all that well. Now, of course, super secret time, there is a wonderful loophole for those outside the United States, specifically if you live like me in Canada. In Canada, Anime Strike as a service does not exist. However, Amazon Prime Video does, which just so happens to contain the vast majority of Anime Strike's library, complete with currently airing shows, but without the additional monthly price tag. I don't know if that's an oversight on Amazon's part, but hey, if you live in Canada and have a Prime subscription anyway, take advantage of this before they fix it. Strike has some other issues as well, but let's move on to the problem of Netflix, the other elephant. Netflix is a bit less of an issue for most people because as a service, there's a very good likelihood that you already have a Netflix subscription anyways for non-anime related material. Marvel, Stranger Things, Voltron. If you don't have a Netflix sub, then well, yes, the previous conundrum of choosing your sub services still applies. Netflix's biggest problem, however, unlike traditional services like Funimation, Crunchyroll, and even Anime Strike, is availability. The best example of this is Little Witch Academia. Lots of anime fans, myself included, were really looking forward to this show over the past several years, only for Netflix to grab the license and... Well, as far as we were concerned, do nothing with it for the longest time. We are used to getting anime as it airs in Japan, but Netflix doesn't like the whole release a new episode a week thing, you see. Their system is not really designed for that. Netflix likes releasing entire shows at once and letting its viewers binge, but that's not conducive to the usual habits of the weekly anime watcher. So that left us waiting until the end of the season for Little Witch to actually be legally available, and even then we only got half of it. Plus side, it comes with a dub for those that want that sort of thing, but the delay is absolutely killer. Personally, I pay for Netflix anyways, and it's not a financial drain, but that delay is even more infuriating than Anime Strike at times because for those who don't know, I am a pretty big advocate of doing whatever you can to watch anime legally. Netflix makes this hard because I need to suck it up and then not watch things, which for some people means that they are more likely to turn to piracy. This is something I don't want to do and I certainly don't want to advocate it because fan subs and illegal streaming do nothing to help the industry. Like, I know that you can argue that legal streaming services don't help all that much either because a lot of the money goes to the production communities and not the animators themselves, but that's a whole different ball of wax and a discussion for another time. We should, as fans, be doing the best that we can to support the industry that we love so much because without support, the industry will inevitably die. If there is no money to be made, then anime studios and distributors will simply close up shop and then we get nothing good day, sir. And we don't want that. Many people have various reasons to pirate anime. I get that. I did it myself back in the day, but because I am now in a position to be able to support the industry, I do my utmost to do so. That's why Netflix's model 
massively sucks for me. A North American anime streaming service should really just fix the service issue of piracy. Both Crunchyroll and Funimation have options available for people who can't afford their premium services, which helps alleviate the desire to pirate anime. Doubly so now that they have combined their libraries. If you really want to watch as much streaming anime as possible, you'll need to pay a lot because not including the services I've already mentioned, there's also the Anime Network, Daisuke, Anime Lab. Sure, a lot of these services share titles, so it's not like you need to get all of them, but for those services you do want, the price does start to add up. I would love to have a solution for you. I would love to be able to say, now if only Amazon and Netflix did this one thing, then everything would be solved. But the solutions that I have are the very things that they're not planning on doing. Netflix will not release anime on a weekly basis, like other services, because they have no reason to. Amazon will not offer ad-supported versions of Strike, because they don't need to. Best anime Strike could do is remove the restriction of having to pay for Prime, but considering the logistics is all based around that, I doubt they're in a hurry to do so, especially when it means less money for them. These were my thoughts for those who wanted to know. I'll update you in future as necessary, but for now, this is where I stand. I don't agree with the practices of these services, and I'd like to hope, as an advocate of legal anime streaming, that there will be changes for the better in future. But I'm just not optimistic at the moment. I'll still mention when titles on these services are available, and I'm not gonna go so far as to say that I'm boycotting these services, but I just don't have to like them. So thank you for watching, and of course a very big thank you to all of my patrons who make these videos possible. Without your support, I would not be able to keep doing this. And until next time, stay frosty everyone.